is Alexander McBride. I'm the uh, pastor of this First African Baptist Church here on Beaufort, South Carolina. I have been the pastor going on 20 years now, and I am the 16th pastor in over 157 years. So short leadership, long time. It is very important, uh, not just because of the uh, uh, church membership and past congregations, but it's a landmark. It's a landmark that marked the uh, first school after independence here for uh, the local uh, freedmen as well as Penn Center. Uh, it acted uh, as somewhat of an overflow for the hospital that was at once uh, Buford Baptist also. Uh, we have had a prominent members such as the first black congressman in Senate here, uh, Robert Smalls. Uh, uh, who was also the captain of the planner, and I recommend that story to everyone. Also, uh, he was baptized here uh, July 5th, 1905, and he used to give uh, 25 cents a Sunday along with the uh, carrying deacons for the uh, uh, upkeep of not only the church, but also the salary of the first pastor, Arthur Waddell, here. This is the original church of 1865. Uh, it was established uh, uh, by Arthur Waddell, our first pastor, as I said, and a host of deacons uh, with a membership of about 900 people. And once the Emancipation Proclamation was read, uh, all of the freedmen uh, went out of most of the predominantly white churches and went into churches that were self-made. That's a large congregation, but you know what? It took every person to build this church and even the very craftsmanship of this church is remarkable with the lock and groove methods and the cedar pens that hold them. And this church has survived every hurricane since 1865. And the only structural damage we have is the steeple blew off prior Gracie. We replaced it with a shorter steeple, but if God's will, we'll put the original height of the steeple back in our second phase of renovation. Oh, definitely. 1863 organization of our little prayer house. We purchased this half block from the Baptist Church of Beaufort uh, from what I'm told approximately $360, which was quite a bit of money uh, in the 1800s. And uh, in purchasing this, the uh, prayer house was raised and established for the worship service. Uh, the organization kept moving. Then the establishment of this building happened. The old praise house, unfortunately, the cause of weather and where it was torn down uh, and it didn't survive the storms as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and it does. It still plays a vital part in the African-American culture as well as other cultures because the leadership was trusted. The leadership was uh, an established government of a sort for the African-American people. And what's so unique about uh, the Beaufort area is that uh, even during times of enslavement, we were independent of the masters because of the prevalent malaria and other diseases that went on in the area, being a uh, semi-tropical area, that they left uh, what you call today straw bosses or people in charge, uh, and they leave them in charge and, and leave the villages and the area mostly to them in their own self-government. And with that said, uh, that's how we still have the pride and also the usage of the Gullah Geechee language. Also, uh, and it's uh, that being a type of uh, mixture of, uh, 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 of Creole and English, and also a type of code that was used that the masters could not understand. And that was done even in the preaching and teaching in, from the pulpit. Yes, it was. So uh, the, the, they, the people was very ingenious on how they did things and uh, what they wanted to reveal. The craftsmanship, the rice planting, the use of tides uh, and planting the rice was unique to those coming up from Barbados via Sierra Leone and, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, it, it's just amazing what they did and, and, and how it did tie in. And there's so many interesting nuances that have happened in the providence of God in this church, such as me becoming the pastor, uh, the tradition of uh, in our Baptist history of how we baptize in running water. We used to do it at Bellamy Curve when the tide came in. We'd baptize and get them out of there before the tide went out. We didn't want to lose anybody. So, but we stopped that because of biohazards and animals. So now we uh, still baptize with running water. And up under the pulpit right there, we have a cistern 
that we pump hot and cold running water in. And when we do baptize, we click open the drainage and keep the water running and still keep up with the tradition. That's not a hearsay tradition, but there are other hearsay traditions that we have that I would be glad to share with anyone that comes on a tour here. And we are open for tour uh, here on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we are open for special tours should you give us a call and just want a guided tour here. My number is 843-812-7876. My name is Alexander McBride. I'm retired from secular life and do this full time, so I'm always available for you. I talked about the uh, system that we have here, the ingenuity and the craftsmanship, also space saving, is the baptismal here. We raise up the plates, put in the uh, movable handles, fill it up with hot and cold running water, and when the candidates go in, myself, the deacon, I go over, open the drain, keep the water running, and baptize the candidates here. The wood that you see here in the uh, pulpit, not all of it's original to First African Baptist. However, to maintain the historicity of the church, we shipped in wood prior 1865 to mix with this to keep it in line with the uh, history of it. Also, back here, we just recently made this room of reflection. Uh, this entire church, when I came here in 2003, was so dilapidated that the entire church had to be raised up off its foundations and new foundations placed in this church and lowered back down on. Uh, the brainchild of that is our own Poppy Gatson here, uh, who served uh, as a senior deacon for quite some time. This is the picture of the praise house that we talked about that was originated in 1863. It looks like brick, but it's wood. And then on the building of the church, organized in 1865, finished a, a bit later on, but it was organized by this man, uh, Pastor Arthur Waddell, who was our first pastor that served for 30 years here. The man that I succeeded here, uh, Pastor Brooks, another very learned and educated man, served here interim as well as emeritus for 52 years. That's a long time. And we have a host of other pastors, but as I said, I'm in the lineage of only 16 in over 157 years and whatnot. Uh, what we're really, really known for throughout the neighborhood is the uh, graceful aging of our congregation also. And what I mean by that is I'm about the youngest thing here at 63 years old and everyone else a bit older than I am, but we age gracefully. This young lady here uh, uh, celebrated 100 years here, 100 year birthday. The young lady up against the wall there, 100 years. Around the corner, pictures of Mother Henny, 103 years. Uh, you know, it, it's just amazing. And to look as an example of the graceful aging of the congregation, this young lady we funeralized not too long ago in her 90s. Uh, this part of the church is not original, it's an add-on. The back of the church, as you see here, uh, these used to be the exits and whatnot, but this was recently added and recent is relative and uh, whatnot. But we have the picture of Robert Smalls that I had pointed out earlier. And he is a member, authenticated and fact, and, and fact checked, uh, baptized July 5th, 1905. And here is the documentation of how he used to give 25 cents a Sunday with the other deacons to support uh, Pastor uh, uh, Waddell and whatnot. And Pastor Waddell's grave is on the outside there, and it's available for rubbings, as well as our very first deacon is on the other side, whose grave, uh, gravestone is available for rubbings also. But beside that, everyone is welcome here. Anytime, all the time. 11 o'clock to 12, 12.15, Sunday services.